Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Podcast with Borg, Betts, and a baller. Welcome in, boys and girls. We made it to August here on the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Bergenoni, and I am joined by Matthew Betts and Mike Wright. That was a, the fastest Borgannoni you possibly like. That was a man who's ashamed of his name. My name is Kyle Borgannoni. Just like <laughs> you just like threw it out to the ether, man. Borgannoni. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Kyle. Be proud, man. Be proud. Yeah. You know what's funny, Mike? Is Jason's called that out a couple times on this podcast. Just how fast you say it? And maybe that's just it. It's just I'm used to me. I'm I'm in my skin. I'm just so used to myself philosophically. You know, just just th- this is just who I am, and so it just rolls off the tongue. I got you. Well, the the rest of the world is not used to your nickname. That's not a, or no, I'm sorry, not nickname. Your <laughs> last name. That's not. It, that's not a super common name. You are the only Borgannoni that I've met in my forty plus years of living. Well, I need the rest of the Borgannonis across the earth to just rise up and message <laughs> Mike, and <laughs> they all change their names. They're like. We don't know because they're like you. They're embarrassed. They're Kyle, embarrassed. When you, to know. when you go out to eat and you go to the hostess and they ask for your name to put down for you know reservation or whatever, oh. do you just hit them with the actual name and then have to spell it out, which probably takes I don't know a good three or four minutes, or do you just give them some like rando <laughs> like uh, Williams last name Williams or Evans like no, something he, super basic? <laughs> Kyle B. <laughs> Williams was you, was my mom's maiden name, but I used to have this game I'd play with myself where I would just give a different name every single time just to throw Emma off, and, and then I, I got tired of it. So it's just Borg. And now. you you were a, a teacher yes, or at some point, right, Kyle? Yeah. Were you Mr. B? Oh, I made sure they said Borgannoni. Oh, what a jerk. Oh, I was, Classic Kyle. I, I ruled with an iron fist, let me tell you. I would, yeah, it sounds right. Such no, a I was a fun out. teacher. I know. On this episode, people, I just want you to know that I hear you loud and clear. So we're going to talk quarterbacks. We're going to talk about dynasty quarterbacks, super flex tiers. You people out there, you sickos that just say, hey, I need more super flex rankings. We're going to talk about all of those on this show today and kind of assess where we see the tiers. I think that's more of the conversation in dynasty because we're assessing over you know a couple different years. We'll even stroll down memory lane and look back a couple years at some of the names that uh, in Dynasty, you might have had on your team. You might have forgot that they were ranked that high. So I feel like it's going to be a good show. I feel like I need you guys to, to give me some nostalgia, though, for some of those names. Oh, I've looked at the list, and I was already remembering what has been. You can get all of our up-to-date rankings in the Ultimate Draft Kit bets. I know you were hard at work shifting around everything possible for the Broncos with the Farball Jones news. So, I mean, everything's update. Bets, you you went to town on that. Yeah, man, it's sad. And like writing the blurb, especially in the injury section, you know, about his dynasty outlook, it's like, man, this guy's entering, was supposed to be entering his age 30 season. ACL the year before on one leg, now the Achilles in the other. It's like, man, this is a guy who people were hyped about this year. Like we talked about it's, on the best ball show. It's the backwards show. Sterling Shepard. Oh, yeah, exactly. We talked about on the best ball show, like his ADP over the last month was screaming up draft boards. And of course, now that. You know, we'll, we'll come back down and he'll go undrafted. But, man, pouring out for Fireball. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for the person. Hopefully he can get right. And one more year of Fireball Jones in the field would be good. Uh, Maybe. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. I know. Man. I was looking at his dynasty outlook, and it's like, how do you, in a league, look at a player and say, hey, this is anything marketable to anyone else after two years of not playing what it will be next year? And... It's just impossible. I did want to get your quick takes on Marvin Mims, a player that I think we've all been yes. excited about. So, Mike, I, I know we're, we've kind of adjusted our projections and everything else, but like in year one, can Marvin Mims finish as the one, the second best wide receiver on this team? And then two, like somebody that you go into next year saying like, he's an asset for my team. I don't, I wouldn't project him to be number two on the Broncos, but I, Marvin Mims, before all this, like back when the the draft happened and the dynasty rankings were coming out, the rookie rankings, I had Marvin Mims, you know, considerably higher than consensus out there. I just uh, he's a very exciting player to me and lands with 
Sean Payton, who, like, you give Sean Payton some speed, and he figures out how to do good things. And Cortland Sutton, I mean, who who knows? I like, I don't know what has happened to Cortland Sutton, but his career certainly feels like it's trending in the wrong direction. Tim Patrick is now gone. Uh, how many years has Jerry Judy left on the contract? Is he in year four? He's in or year five? four, and they can pick up the the fifth year. Okay. But so so Judy will be around for a while. But Marvin Mims is a very, very exciting player to me. Yeah, Betts. Do you do you feel similarly about Mims? I remember in the pre draft process we talked about him and how kick return ability, how that translates, and it seems like for a while Sean Payton was talking him up. Yeah, for sure. And I think my biggest question mark on some of these guys when they go to these situations with the coaching change is just kind of like how quickly do they implement their guys because. It was a very crowded wide receiver room. Obviously, Judy, Sutton, uh, and Tim Patrick were kind of the favorite, I think, to start as the three wide receivers, but now we have no Tim Patrick, and we didn't even mention the KJ Hamler thing. It sounds like it's not a huge, serious issue, but he's dealing with uh, a minor heart condition. He's going to keep him out, they said, roughly a month and then a few weeks to get back into football shape. So, I mean, maybe he misses a few weeks to start the year, but KJ Hamler, I think we know at this point, is a rotational player in the NFL and, and certainly nothing more, but that deep threat ability that Mims can bring and that speed, like I'm excited about what that can be in this offense because they don't really have that role or, or a player to fill that role on a week in week out basis. And I think Mims can be that guy. And I, the, the fact they had the wide receiver room that they did, which I think is league average to good, like it's not great, but it's good. And they still use the first draft pick, despite the fact they had no draft picks at all to trade up and get him. I think tells you a lot about how shot and pain, pain feels. So this Tim Patrick injury, I feel like just kind of thrusts him into a key piece if the Broncos are going to have success this year. They're certainly one of the most volatile teams when you saw how bad it was last year. And I think a lot of times you can easily go, well, it can't be as bad. Like, well, it could be just horizontally to the same. It's like this, this team couldn't move the ball and Russell on every single efficiency mark was just not good. So I just, I'm, I'm glad we get to mention Mims. I know it's in light of an injury, but I think uh, I really like him a lot in dynasty and I'm um, excited to see where he goes. So, yes, you can get all those rankings in the Ultimate Draft Kit, but we're here to talk quarterbacks. Dynasty Rankings. If you want to go back, you can listen to our wide receivers episode, running backs episode. We did two on each of those, talk through the top 10, and then had some interesting discussions about players that are going to move up and move down. So you can go back and listen to those. We're going to be talking quarterbacks today, and I wanted to stroll down memory lane and look at the top 10 dynasty quarterback rankings since 2018. Okay. And just a reminder, dynasty rankings are really hard because you're assessing what you think a player is going to be worth over a period of time, not what they're actually worth. So there'll be some names on this list that you're like, okay, why were they there? Because there was, there was hope. There was, you know, this is what I think this player is going to be over the next four to five years. And things can change because the NFL changes. So going back to 2018, I have a list and I'll send this out on Twitter, whatever we're calling it these days. Uh, X. X. X going to give it to you. <laughs> what is one of the craziest rankings you saw, Mike, in the top 10 list since 2018? <laughs> sure. I mean, it would be the one we were discussing it before the show. Because in 2019, from uh, from nowhere to somewhere, your dynasty quarterback two was none other than Baker Mayfield. <laughs> he, uh, Patrick Mahomes had uh, firmly jumped here to be the quarterback one at that point, but the excitement for Baker Mayfield was truly off the charts. Was 2019 when uh, was that when OBJ got traded there as well? Yes, because that was the year that everything was supposed to click for them. Because Baker had an awesome yeah. rookie year. Yes, he did. Yeah. So and so uh, and so like everything was aligning for him. So it was just it's really this this just shows like dynasty is difficult. The NFL is difficult. Baker Mayfield after his rookie year, just NFL wise, look how many commercials the guy had. Like everyone was counting on Baker Mayfield to jump from great rookie year to uh, like to being a household name to being a true franchise quarterback and. Through a series of calamities, it just never worked out. Bets, who's the name that stands out to you on this list? Yeah, how can I not come on here and just bring up the fact that Carson Wentz 
Not only was the QB3 in <laughs> Dynasty in 2018 based off this list, but somehow managed to stick around in the top 10, not one more year, but two two more years. In 2020, was he really the QB9 in Dynasty ADP? Yes. Ugh, this is according to Rodevis. That is insane to remember because like the 2020, uh, excuse me, the 2017 Super Bowl team, that's when he had the ACL injury and we were like, okay, he'll come back, you know, and we saw warning signs like in 2018, 2019, like it, maybe he's not as good as he was. And then 2020, somehow he was he's the, still stuck around as a top 10 quarterback. That is absolutely mind blowing. He was the QB9. The QB9 in 2019. Mind blowing. So, I mean, he had, yeah, like the the 17, that was the year where it looks for the Wentz truthers. They got to fly their flags and, and do the victory laps. Of course, the, the injury, and then he's not, not nearly as good the follow year, but 2019, it looked like he was possibly bouncing back, but no, he was not. No, definitely not. Um, I, I still just want to mention that Andrew Luck was the QB3 <laughs> in Dynasty Startups up until training camp when he retired. So that's the type of player that people lost. And uh, I, I mean, it was it was shocking across the league. Mike, you mentioned earlier, you guys were doing a live show when you found out? Yeah, we were about five to ten minutes from going on stage to record uh, the live show in Phoenix. So that was that was quite the fun scrambling. Number one, trying to figure out was this news actually real? Because when it was coming out, it seemed like somebody got you know the back when it was when it was like you would fake accounts. I guess people still do that today, and it's kind of easier. Uh, but back then, it would, you know, is this actually real news? And it turned out it was, and that was just that was chaos. Looking back since 2018, on average. There's about three quarterbacks per year that will drop from this list. So we'll talk about our list and our tiers today, but just keep that in mind because I know when I look at a list, especially for this year, it feels like there is an elite seven to eight quarterbacks that you can say like, okay, well, they feel pretty safe here. Uh, we'll talk about the first two tiers. It's like, oh man, there, there's nothing that could really change. It is very possible. In fact, on odds, like it will happen. So keep that in mind. There's also things that you can't predict. Like when Deshaun Watson dropped, like, okay, well, you know, it's off the field stuff, Kyler, catastrophic injury. You know, those are the kind of things that shift the course that we can't really project in here. But if you want an article form for this, we have a Dynasty Superflex Tears article on our site and tons of other Dynasty content if you want to look at that. But we're going to talk about the tiers, so not every single player individually, and then kind of discuss where maybe we're different, who could drop. So I have a tier to start us off. I'm just calling it the GOATS. And by the way, I titled every single tier. Because it was pretty fun of to do. Of course you did. The GOATs. So in tier one for Dynasty quarterbacks, I have Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. And that's it. So my question for you is, does Jalen Hurts belong in this group? Or is it okay to have a tier of just two? Go ahead, Betts. I don't want to sound like too much of a homer here. You but are. <laughs> we think about what we look for. And it's not just uh, the talent in and of, the, of himself, of the player. But also thinking about, we talked a lot on the show, you know, two years, maybe three years if you're really trying to forecast the NFL. But the guy just signed a big time contract. AJ Brown is there. Devonta Smith is there. The offensive line. I think they'll have a little turnover, but they're a smart organization that they plan for that in the future. Will they always be a top two or three unit? Probably not. That just doesn't happen. But will they be a good to great unit for the next couple of years? I think that's very, very likely. So you literally check all the boxes for Jalen Hurts as far as you know, his talent, the weapons he has, the situation, and he's still in the age, right? He'll, he'll turn 25 this year where we see quarterbacks continue to run the football. We see it drop off as guys get closer to 30. But, you know, if you're telling me I get I get Jalen Hurts and I get that situation for the next two, three years, I think you can make an argument he's a tier one quarterback in Dynasty. For me, I want to see one more year. One more year of sustained, like, greatness. I'm not saying he has to be you know, top one, two, three, like just a top five quarterback season again, where maybe, and maybe that's a lot to ask. But when I look at this tier of Mahomes and Allen, I feel very comfortable where their ages are, the, you know, passing volume. And obviously with Allen, you get a ton of rushing as well. So I just think they're in a tier of their own and I need one more year from Hertz, especially when like, okay, is 13 rushing touchdowns going to happen again? The tush push is legal, sure, it, so it probably... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it probably <laughs> won't, but the tush push is legal, so I think he's a good yeah. bet for 8-9. Like, I mean, it seems like regression is coming, but it just seems unstoppable, and they've they've publicly said, like, we're going to do this until teams stop us. 
Yeah, and they had teams had an entire season to try and figure out how to stop it, and they couldn't. Maybe they do, maybe, but it's I, honestly I don't. How do you stop that other than you have you perfectly the team like the defensive line perfectly guesses when the snap is going to come out. Like that's the, the that's the only thing I think that can stop that play for one yard. Thirteen rushing touchdowns is ridiculous. He probably won't get there again, but the fact that he does. Uh, it, he does run, and they're set up just so nicely with Brown and Smith, like Betts is saying. I, to me, I'm I feel comfortable moving Jalen Hurts up into the the tier one category. It dynasty is a game of projection, and like the, to get the to get the largest return, or you know extract the largest amount of value from players. You do you have to you have to guess a little bit and. <laughs> And go with what your uh, your process or your the, your gut of of playing so many years you've absorbed the information. You have to make that guess, and and for me, I will project that by the end of next year, Jalen Hurts will be easily in the tier one. So I'm fine moving him up right now. So with Mahomes and Allen, it's like hard to even talk about them because we really don't have to say very much. Are there any foreseeable roadblocks? that you see for these guys over the next, you know, two to three years. Like it's hard for us to say any further. They have the contracts and they have the resume to say they belong here for a while. Is there anything that just down the line, I just want to poke some hole is, or, sure. or am I just stupid for bringing that up? No, not if anything, it's uh, Mahomes is fine because Mahomes value doesn't like, he's just going to keep throwing for the yardage that he's throwing for, for a really long time. Josh Allen has already publicly talked about, Maybe I need to run less. I need to be more of a quarterback than a football player. And, you know, it, when when plays break down and instincts kick, kick in, Josh Allen's going to keep running because he, because he is a football player. But maybe they design things a little bit less for him to, you know, take some draws or, or some planned runs. And then the fact of just, like, looking at Cam Newton, which Cam Newton had a bunch of outside – like I mean, he had his car wreck. He he had some other stuff happen to his body, but eventually, when you're like you're so used to bullying and beating up on people because you're bigger, stronger, faster, eventually you aren't that, and then your body has now taken uh, it, taken some real toll. So if Josh Allen's running comes down like three years from now, that won't that won't be a huge surprise because he'll be thirty by then. Am I doing that math right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he'll he'll be turning thirty. I it's hard to foreshadow Josh Allen running the way that he does right now when he's thirty years old, and there's young whippersnappers who are twenty two year olds who are just two hundred fifty solid pounds of muscle chasing you down. So let me ask this last thing about Allen because I was thinking about his team situation. You get to say think about the same thing with Mahomes and Kelsey, but like, I mean, with Allen, we've seen a lot with Diggs in the off season. Gabe Davis is in a contract year. It's like the weapons might be different than people realize in two to three years for Josh Allen. Like we can't just yeah, say this true. is, you know, Stephon Diggs is in his age 30 season. So it's like things will change, but I think he's built in a way that we've seen like, okay, he can just get it done. So Betts, final question on Allen is, do you factor that in at all if you're splitting hairs between these two, between Mahomes and Allen? I mean, I think it's a good tiebreaker, but like you said, we're we're trying to find negatives to say about Allen. Right. I mean, I agree with you though. Like the pass catchers, and we kind of saw it in the playoffs. Like they didn't really have enough firepower to really get there to the Super Bowl, and and that's different than fantasy and everything. But like, I think it speaks to the fact that Gabe Davis is probably more of a very low end two or like a better as like a wide receiver three for an NFL team. And like you said, the Diggs off field stuff was weird, and like he is getting a little older, so. I do think if you're using that as a tiebreaker, it makes sense to lean with Mahomes or if you prefer, you know, Hurts, whatever. But um, like you said, you're, we're trying to find negatives. These guys are all absolutely incredible. Is Josh Allen going to be our generation's Dan Marino? Where it's like, oh, no, this guy's never going to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> but he's oh, awesome. Oh, man. I'm not trying to – I love Josh Allen. I have him in Dino Jr., and I'm going to ride him forever. But I'm, like, kind of worried, like, oh, no, are, are we ever going to get a full team Bills show up in the Super Bowl? I would, maybe, but I, I would think that Allen gets at least one. I hope so. All right, tier two, I'm calling this elite offenses with long-term contracts. And I have a little asterisk because 
Um, the one player on here, Kyle's so proud of he named every group bets. Yeah, I did. And this is this is what he came up with. <laughs> this is elite offenses with long term contracts, kind of, kind of. Because great we still title, need a, Kyle. <laughs> we need a we need a Joe Burrow one. Uh, so in this tier, I have personally Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence. And so we kind of talked about Hertz can float between the top one and this one. Can anyone from this group jump into the elite tier? Like where you Jalen Hurts. <laughs> oh man, stop. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Anybody else other than Jalen Hurts? Yeah. Um Lamar can. Lamar can bounce back in there. I know the the three of us are pretty hot and bothered by the idea of what Monkin, uh new offensive coordinator Todd Monkin's going to do. Our pants are off. Yeah. I like I, I like I try to put them on, and they just they they incinerate. They just burst into flames. I've been wearing pants because, for a month, boys. Not a month. <laughs> because we're so excited for the play volume and the fact that they're actually going to let Lamar Jackson throw the ball, which he is good at. Like, um, So I, Lamar can move up there because he could be a 1,000-yard rusher and he could be a 30-plus uh, uh, touchdown thrower. Burrow and Herbert, it's it's so tough because these guys they're they they aren't at least to me they aren't uh, Patrick Mahomes just yet, and their touchdowns are going to fluctuate. Like Burrow, definitely closer than Justin Herbert because he's surrounded by insanity uh, for his wide receivers currently. But they're like it's it wasn't. It was very, very disappointing what happened to Justin Herbert last year, some uh, caused by injury, of course. But it's also like, yeah, that's that's what happens to pocket passers. They just when they aren't Patrick Mahomes and like even Tom Brady. If you go go back and like look through the 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 game logs or the season logs for Tom Brady, there's a couple years where you're like, oh, well, that wasn't very Tom Brady like. Uh, the pocket passers, their touchdowns, they just they fluctuate because. The ebbs and the flows of the NFL, running games get better sometimes, as we're seeing right now. Defenses are scheming specifically to shut down these really vertical passing attacks with the the cover two shell, and it's you know it has been slowing teams down, and then just you you might get more rushing touchdowns, so it's harder to move them in, and then Trevor Lawrence is the like, I am so torn here on Trevor Lawrence because I, I know a lot of people are very excited for for the right reasons the process I think is is sound but I'm just not sure that we're that will we see that Trevor Lawrence spike outlier year or will you see or more importantly will you see consistent spike years from Trevor Lawrence where it's not just oh we hit it this year then he's down for two oh we went back up and we got 37 touchdowns this year I don't know like I don't know if 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 Lawrence and Doug Peterson are the combo to get that done. It's an interesting I think question to ask because Peterson has gotten a lot from his quarterbacks. I mean Carson Wentz we just kind of joked about it at the top but like going back to those years, you know, he's gotten a lot from his quarterbacks over the course of time and I think it wasn't hard to envision a step forward for Lawrence coming from the circus with Urban Meyer as a rookie. Right. So it's like it was the most obvious year two step forward that anyone could have predicted. You just get an adult in the room and good things will happen. But man, now he gets a second year in the system. They're I, I don't want to say replacing, but upgrading from a a Zay Jones every snap type of player, which he was good for them last year. But you're getting Calvin Ridley to replace that and complement the offense in a way where you could just see it really come together. So I understand the hype. I think it is warranted, especially given his you know pedigree, not just from the NFL draft, but from college, from high school, like he's been the guy for years and we've been waiting for it. And it's like, oh yeah, we saw it last year. Like he is this good. So I'm excited uh, for him in year two. I do think there is a chance he has one of these years where you're like, oh, okay. He is up there with these guys, with Lamar, with Burrow. If he has a massive step forward. Now he has to do that and that's big time projection. So I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I think it is in the range of outcomes, but it ultimately to me comes down to what, does Calvin Ridley have left and is he still Calvin Ridley? Because man, if you scroll Twitter, it looks like Calvin Ridley is still is still good. So he, he um, looks very fast. He does. Matthew. I'm I'm excited about Lawrence though. And the one thing too about him, we didn't see it a ton last year. But going back to Clemson, like 
he was used a lot you know, as a zone read type of runner. Like it, I'm hopeful that maybe they bring that out for a couple of years and we get an unlocked fantasy ceiling from from Lawrence. But as I said, I'm I'm very bullish on on Trevor Lawrence. I just want to quickly bring up Justin Herbert, who I feel like I've talked about a ton this year. We've also talked about like okay, there's room for rushing touchdowns to, to emerge. We've talked about the deep passing game. Talked about Kellen Moore a ton. I just want to bring up the fact that his weapons will be changing. Austin Eckler is a free agent next year. The year after, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. So Justin Herbert, you know, I, I hate even mention a year, but it's like Justin Herbert 2025 might have a different crew around him uh, than what we're used to right now. And to me, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that unknown. Um, if Keenan Allen wants to play till he's 36 and just be like a Larry Fitzgerald, that's cool. It's cool with me. He's he's my he's my Larry Mike. Does that does that feel right? I mean, you're you're saying these things, but we just did a a mock draft on the fantasy footballers. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got overruled. Where, where Keenan Allen was there, and it was like I had moved on to the next round because I'm like, well, of course Kyle's going to take Keenan Allen, and then you then you didn't. <laughs> you got bullied to the ground by the other deucers. You didn't stand up for your man. I, who, who I know. Did you guys take it was a running back, right? No, we took Devonta Smith. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, I thought <laughs> I it was a fine. Look, pick. Yeah, the pick is the pick is fine, but this is a this is a stance of 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 having high moral character, which Kyle I thought he had. Apparently, I don't. I don't even know if Keenan recognizes me anymore. Like if he doesn't, if he was like if he was out and about, he wouldn't even know who I was on the street. No, he would not. It's okay. It's okay. I I just want to say this about Justin Herbert, though. I think you just I think he's going to be in this tier for a long time, along with Burrow. I think his t- tier fears really secure you're saying like but but just solidified as tier two not not ever just given tier one just a little little smooth it's hard for me to see that like he could have an outlier year where he gets five six rushing touchdowns and you know couples together 30 to 35 passing and gets there you but mean this year what about the kellen moore bump i do like i do i did a lot of research today on the kellen moore bump especially for Keenan. Yeah, i mean but it was it was massive for dak right because that was yeah, I I think that was 2019. Uh, Kyle, go ahead and vet that real quick because I'm going to read the numbers of of Dak was, which Dak put it together because he was giving you some of the the Konami of with rushing touchdowns, but passing touchdowns, 23, 22, 22, never above 3,800 yards, skyrockets to nearly 5,000 passing yards and 30 passing touchdowns. Gets hurt, then it's. 4,500 yards and 37 passing touchdowns. Like it, like it, Kellen Moore, it was not just a, oh, we're slightly, we have slightly more uh, production from the passing. It's no, it, this was a, a full tier jump. Yeah. It was 2019 when he started, which, by the way, you have yep, to like, there you go, not go to Kellen Moore's player page because he was a player in the NFL or you'll, yeah, you'll end up there. That will, that will not give you his coaching. <laughs> he did have a 400 yard game as a passer. Which was pretty cool. Yeah, like like the final week of a season or something yeah, like that. It, it's like a four hundred yard game, three touchdowns, something Herbert's never done in the same game. Anyway, oh, fun fact, oh, fun fact of the day, and I'll let you guys sit with that fun fact, and we'll take a quick break. All right, Foot Clan, it's that time of year. Your fantasy drafts are right around the corner, and uh, frankly, your league mates, well, they can't win again this year. We got to stop it right here, right now. Pick up the Ultimate Draft Kit. Prepare yourself the right way with the most proven tool to give you an advantage at your draft. All of our player projections, all of our rankings, uh, always updated. Not like those old magazines you used to buy that sat there with dated information. Every bit of news that comes out, we update the Ultimate Draft Kit. We got the Dynasty Pass in there this year as well. You do not want to miss anything in the jam-packed 2023 Ultimate Draft Kit. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. People just got back from that break, and they are just still dumbfounded. They can't believe it. They're just Shocking. peeing their pants. I bet Kellen Moore's <laughs> yeah. brought that up 20 times already in the offseason. He better. He's like, Herbert, you've never even done this. W- yeah. Week one. Tier three <laughs> has a cooler name than the last tier. Let me just say that. It's called Shoot for the Moon. Yeah, there we go. There's a that's – a, that's a title. There you go. All right. In this tier, I have Justin Fields, Kyler Murray – Anthony Richardson and Deshaun Watson. Okay. And these players might be a bit more volatile. I think Justin Fields for a lot of people can be in the next tier up 
in tier two. Um, he is. And I get that. And I think the upside's there. I think I would like to see one more year. I know that I've been a truther with you, Mike, the whole time. Betts and I have lost a lot of money on Justin Fields <laughs> betting. Let's just say that. But I think I need one more year and I'd like to see what it looks That's like fair. Uh, at age 24. So with Fields, do you guys put him in that second tier or is it is it safer to put him here? What do you think, Mike? I mean, it's much, much safer to to place him here. I would I've I talked about, you know, in our dynasty league, I traded Justin Fields and a couple picks to move from his potential upside to the safety of Joe Burrow. I was rewarded immediately with a devastating calf strain <laughs> that we have no idea when Joe Burrow's actually gonna be okay. I mean, guys, the irony of I trade the mobile rushing quarterback who is it seems not as safe for the pocket presence of Mr. Joseph Burrow. It, guys, I was I was in shambles. How close together was, was the trade to the injury? Was it like days, like a week? What were we talking about? No, no, it was it the the trade happened back during the rookie draft. Oh, okay. So this was like the end of or right after the I was gonna say, NFL. Man, just draft. imagine like making that trade the oh. day before the injury being like, Are <laughs> you serious? <laughs> yeah. But I but it still was an are you serious? And it's it's projection for Justin Fields at this time of the addition of DJ Moore will be a big deal. The reports coming through on Darnell Mooney uh, from the beat reporters in Chicago are saying he looks like he is back. He's got his quickness. Doesn't look like he's playing with hesitation, which is you know the mental hurdle of being able to trust your body again, which is great news because Darnell Mooney is like he has completely vanished from the fantasy football collective memory of he is a really good wide receiver he's not a number one but he is a good wide receiver and if if this is if if chase claypool <laughs> can do anything of substance like he then then justin fields has a really strong three pack of wide receivers and a, apparently a franchise tight end because cole Komet got that money cole Camo. so i the way I play Dynasty, I would probably put Justin Fields up into that that tier two, but it is it's a little sketchy. I'm yeah, I think go ahead. I was gonna say Kyle, if you want to jump in after this, but I was just gonna say like on on Fields too. The other thing that uh, we talk a lot about the DJ Moore stuff, obviously it's massive, but the team also recognized like this line is an issue, and they went out and addressed that. So I'm hopeful that the collective pieces come together and turn into something good. I also think if you just follow the tea leaves, like, you know, they lose David Montgomery. They still have Khalil Herbert, who we think is good, but then like they didn't spend a lot at running back. I know people are a fan of Roshan Johnson, but they didn't go out and get one of these free agents. They didn't resign Montgomery. They didn't use a, a decent, you know, high draft pick on a running back. So I'm hopeful that maybe we see more passing from Justin Fields with DJ Moore. And that leads to inherently even more scrambling opportunities. So I think if you're talking fantasy, you could easily make the case that he's a tier two guy. If you look at redraft ADP, like that's where he is, right? It's just that I think there is some projection happening, and I don't think that we can confidently say like he's guaranteed to be the starting quarterback for the next two, three years. Whereas yes. the other guys, you can absolutely say that. There was a shift in the offense last year, right? Like it's week six on where he went off, and they decided to say, "Hey, you know what? Let's design running plays for this guy." I don't know why. Let's just let's do it, considering he's a franchise quarterback, and it resulted in the most scrambles. Like when you look at PFF's charting, like this guy scrambled more than anybody else. So I'm curious if that one is able to hold up over time. Uh, two, what does it take away from just overall passing volume? Like can Justin Fields hit more than 25 passing touchdowns ever in a season? Or does it not even matter if he's going to run like this? Like if he's going to run for, you know, uh, he had he averaged 7.1 yards per carry. Like if he's going to do that and rush the ball eight plus times a game, then who cares? Or is it is it like is he capped at 25 passing touchdowns? I I would say for the most part I don't care. Uh, I mean long term that strategy just can't win for Justin Fields because if you saw him at the end of last year, that was a man whose body was just completely breaking down from from uh, overuse of running at full speed getting hit uh, and I don't think 
I I don't think that's winning football. Like they they were the the Bears were at least competitive on offense. They were really exciting to watch. They had the number one pick. <laughs> like this this is not how you win in today's NFL. You have to be able to pass. So the hope is yes, he will surpass that twenty five passing touchdowns. Can he? I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure, but you're gonna have, you know two to three more years I think for sure what what it was what's field's contract situation he's in his he's in third year and if they pick up the fifth year which and so he's in year three right yes. now yeah yeah so you you have three more pretty much three more years uh of like high level high high level Justin fields is what it feels like so I'm again I'm good with him here but I agree with what Betts is saying of their the guarantee that he is the Chicago Bears answer in their franchise quarterback, that still is not answered. It's wild to think about the difference in, you know, the archetypes because I think a lot of people this year are looking at Fields and say he's gonna put together a Jalen Hurts type season. And there's like six months difference in their age, by the way. That's it. it but if it, it wow. feels like Hurts, we've gotten so much more football that we can like gain confidence in and obviously a Super Bowl run, but it was just wild looking at their age differences and go, okay, well, man, this is this is what Fields could be, but I'm still holding him back from there. Let's, I want I want to talk about this tier though because I feel like there's some volatile names depending on where you're at. Kyler Murray is somebody that I traded for in a superflex league because I kind of got him at 75, 80 cents on the dollar, but I I get mixed reviews and Mike, I get the Cardinals side from you guys. I get you know what scares me when I look at certain analytics last year. And then I get some injury reports from him too. So I don't know what to do with him. And I feel like Betts just needs to like, give me a medical, like, like you need to shake me and tell me what's really going to happen. Cause I traded for him this off season. <laughs> well, I did too. So we're, we're in okay. the same boat here. Uh, and we talked about, you know, some of these names that kind of have been these top 10 dynasty quarterbacks. You don't have to go back very far to when Kyler Murray was valued as the QB six. And that was, entering last year. So I just want to remind people like Kyler, when he's on the field is a fantasy point producer. He's been great. The tricky thing is I almost feel like it's one of those games you play where you're like, okay, the value has come down, which is why I traded for him. And, and I think it's the right move that you make. If you're not set up as a contender this year, given the, you know, team total concerns at four and a half, the, they're incentivized to have a high draft pick. The offensive line is a mess. They lose DeAndre Hopkins the injury, et cetera, et cetera. But I almost wonder, like, do you kind of just file this away for like in a month or two when they're, you know, three weeks into the season and it's like, well, Kyler might not be back yet or he's not running or, you know, whatever. And be like, Hey, remember who this guy was in 2022 and, and previously, like when he's healthy, I feel like he's an incredible trade target in dynasty because the contract says they're committed to him, even though there's so much you know talk about like, do they just go get Caleb Williams or Drake May or whoever is the top quarterback next year? I don't know, man. I'm having a tough time with it because I, I want to buy into Kyler's long-term outlook, even though I understand the concerns for this year. I would say the, I think he is a good trade target right now, and it is a, like you're saying, Bess, it, it is truly a remember how good Kyler is for fantasy football. Because I don't think that this year is going to be good. Of if, if you take away Kyler's mobility, which he doesn't frequently, I should say, he's he for the speed that he has, he doesn't pile up rushing yards like Justin Fields or Lamar Jackson. He like he's not anywhere close to that. But he's super mobile, and he has to be mobile because he's very small in stature. Like he has to be able to move in that pocket find his passing lanes. So that is that's really my concern for this year is whenever he's cleared to come play cuz I think at some point he's going to play. But because of the ACL, we've seen, you know, uh I I I, I can't remember the exact numbers best, but we went over this of like quarterbacks who've torn their ACL and then the next year and it was and it's rushing yards go way down. Like that's the the general uh the, the general result from that study is Almost every single quarterback sees their rushing yards, no matter how active they were, their rushing yards go way down. So I expect that for Kyler Murray. Then can he be good enough 
on limited mobility with that knee as he's trying to get back to full strength. Can he do anything for this year? I have my concerns for that. But long term, he will be he will heal up and then heading into the next off season, it doesn't matter. Like Kyler Murray is either the the starting quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals and he has Hollywood Brown um hey, maybe Michael Wilson is something but they're like they'll do some things there's they, they will add pieces of course or he is traded to a team that desperately wants Kyler Murray and because they have to desperately want him to take on the contract that he currently has and then he's going to go beat Kyler Murray for a different team you know so I don't think it matters either way if he's a Cardinal. For I'm talking for fantasy purposes. If he's a Cardinal and ends up somewhere else, by next year he should be back to full strength, Kyler Murray, which is a true elite fantasy quarterback. So I'm I'm very good with trying to go and capitalize because you can you can get Kyler Murray for cheaper. The fact that he's in tier three here, where his entire career you would have put him easily in in tier two. But he's his value is depressed right now. Yes, I I think right now people are thinking of him more as tier four, or even later. Like they just don't just don't want to have to deal with it. But I like I, the way you laid it out. If it's for this team or it's for another team. Like you're going to have a starting quarterback, so super valuable. I won't touch on Anthony Richardson. We've talked about him a ton on this. I wrote an article. Anthony Richardson his range of outcomes in dynasty. I'll give you two stats though. If he starts nine games, if he runs eighty times then I think he's not only going to maintain value, but may even gain it next year. Those are the marks that I found in the article. I wanted to finish by bringing up Deshaun Watson and say, he's a volatile player with some volatile outcomes. And obviously there's moral stuff. There's everything else. What, like, do you think he can still be an elite fantasy quarterback bets? Like where he's a QB one for your team. I think it's a tricky question to answer because I think he can be a QB one. I mean, right now in like best ball formats and stuff, he's being drafted as such and people are understanding the upside case of, well, it's easy to tell yourself a story why he struggled so much last year away from the team for two and a half, three months, steps right into play, you know, <laughs> in an NFL game. Like it's not that easy to do, especially considering he didn't play the year before, not making excuses for the guy. He created his own situation, but from a football standpoint, it's hard to succeed when that happens. Now he has the full off season, you know, Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore. There's talks of, of them opening it up more, throwing the ball more. So I see the path for it. But at the same time, we have, also have to remember like when he was so good with Houston for fantasy, he also was running way more than I, I remember. I went back and looked at the numbers. Like he was piling up, you know, 400, 500 yards and a handful of scores routinely year in and year out. So we know the rushing mo or ability of quarterbacks tends to go down with time he's entering his age 28 season so i just don't know that you get the vintage deshaun watson plays that we remember from years ago so for those reasons i think that there's a chance he could kind of be a solid valuable piece for you and, and have great weeks great spike weeks but never really regain his tier two i don't know if anyone ever had him in tier one but tier two status where i think if none of this off the field stuff happened it'd be like oh he's going to maintain that for three or four years i don't see that happening yeah, if you go back and look at the list, it's like, oh, well, this guy was seen as a top five guy for years, fell off the map, and now it's hard to reestablish. So this will be a firm year, and kind of a make or break year. Let's go to tier four. I call it back in QB1s plus the Young Bucks. And in this tier, I have Dak Prescott, Tua, Bryce Young, and CJ Stroud. What do you guys think about this pairing? I know Dak has been somebody, Mike, that you've been higher on yep. as like a trade target. Do you think this this group like kind of belongs together? Like the young guys plus established QB ones. I think the tier makes sense because like Bryce Young and CJ Stroud, we can speculate all we want on them, but we as of right now, we have no idea. I mean, well, we know that Bryce Young is the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, but I I do know that I don't know that CJ Stroud is the starting quarterback for the Houston Texans. Because he's because he keeps playing with the twos for for Houston during training camp, so I guess I don't know that for sure. I don't know that Stroud's going to start Week One. So because, silly, <laughs> so um, silly. Because Davis Mills but, has something to show but, apparently. But both of those both of those players very very excited f to see what the careers happen for for these two players. So like it wouldn't surprise me if either of those players comes out has a 
just a not a outrageous like fantasy success, but they show enough on film. You're like, yep, these guys are gonna. You give them a couple years in the league, and they're gonna be at the top. That won't surprise me for either of those players. Tua, man, Tua is the strangest player because I think he's an adequate quarterback, but he's just surrounded by so much talent that. It's it's hard to deny what he can be for fantasy football, and I had this this theory watching games for the Miami Dolphins. I think I told you this theory, Kyle, back during last year when the run was happening. I'm like, because all the the numbers for two was deep ball throwing, like very high completion percentage, very catchable passes, and I'm watching Tyreek Hill get underthrown by five yards, but then Tyreek Hill does. Tyreek Hill stuff stops, goes back to the ball, and it's like, so, well, yeah, I guess it was technically a catchable pass, but that's it's catchable by Tyreek Hill. Like, other players in the NFL aren't making that catch, but it boosts his numbers. So, like, I don't, I don't know. It, this is all anecdotal of, of, like, a smaller sample. I haven't sat through and grinded the film on Tua, each and every one of Tua's deep passes. But I felt like last year, more often than not, I was watching a ball that wasn't actually on target, but Tyreek Hill did something incredible and went and, and caught the ball. But again, he's surrounded by talent. And what what else are the Dolphins going to do? If they keep, if you win, if you're, here's the hard part of a quarterback, if you're successful, you you can't move on. Right. You're not going to be high enough in the draft to do anything about it. So two is your guy. All right, now to the juice to Dak. Yes, Dak Prescott is, I think, my favorite quarterback trade target. He's all the way down here in in Kyle's tier four <laughs> because look, he's Just he's older. He's he's thirty, but dude, he is surrounded by talent. I know he I know he lost. Kellen Moore and the Kellen Moore bump was very, very real for Dak Prescott. But as as much crap as I give McCarthy, because it's just it's a fun thing to do. The guy sets himself up as an easy target. When he was in Green Bay, I mean, he wasn't really a run first coach. But I mean, you, of course, you had Aaron Rodgers, so things are a little bit different. But it's like C.D. Lamb. I think we're unanimous. You can say C.D. Lamb is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Dynasty wise, we went over him in the wide receiver show. He was a top five rated dynasty wide receiver. Brandon Cook still has it. This, I guess, that could be like the sticking point. Is maybe people think Brandon Cooks has lost it. I don't think he has. Watching, you know, training camp videos, which don't let training camp videos completely shatter or build up your opinion, but pay attention to them. Brandon Cooks is looking great. Michael Gallup is looking much, much better, which he should. He's a, now a year removed from the ACL, When I was shocked that he actually got on the field last year at the beginning. I mean, Dak Prescott is in such a good situation that I don't – like. It, I, will, I will personally be shocked if Dak is not a top 12 fantasy quarterback this year and also like sneaks his way back into Tier 3. I – I wonder with this team, though, the window of what they have. So with Dak, he's going to get another contract. He's only 30. Um, they'll they'll figure out something the next year or two. But this team's window, this team feels a little bit more fragile to me because it's one on defense, like, you know, hey, we've got touchdowns. And then the backfield behind Tony Pollard is super thin. So I think that there's a little room with the Cowboys, but I do think he's being underrated. I just took him in a super flex draft as my QB1. And I felt like he was safe. I didn't feel like I had the same ceiling that I once had, but he does feel really safe. Anybody bets you want to talk about in this tier? I want to just hop in with the Mike McCarthy stuff because I have it pulled up actually from his time in Green Bay where you're looking at where they ranked on offense as far as pass attempts and pass yards. Like there's many years where, where I mean, this is the Aaron Rodgers thing too, but like they're top 10 in passing yards when he's been there as the head coach. And the attempts, that's where it comes down a little. They're closer to like 10 to 12 to 14 most years when he was in Green Bay. So clearly Rodgers was just so efficient and carrying that that stat. But this notion of like, 
we're running the ball every play, we're going to establish it. We talked a lot about that. Like they just don't have the personnel to really do it, right? And like they're bringing Brandon Cooks, Gallup's more healthy, CD Lamb's an alpha. I agree that I think Dak largely is undervalued in fantasy. Period. The tricky thing about him jumping up in the, in, in the tier, and it's not as huge of a concern for quarterbacks, but the age is still a factor that people use for tiebreakers and rankings and stuff. So that, to me, and, and obviously not much rushing at this point in his career, uh, to me will prevent him from ever being a, a tier above, or you know, even possibly two years above, two tiers. I don't think that's happening. But he feels like one of these rock solid, especially in superflex QB twos that you can go get. But you'll get, I think, some back end QB one production. So. I am I'm very in on the trade for Dak uh, side of things in Dynasty. The next tier, and I want to I want to qualify this. I call it at the crossroads. And the way that I thought about this tier is, this is <laughs> Ka, the group. Ka. This is what I know. What are you doing? I see the name, and I want to bring it up. I'm I'm this tier. Kyle, you have him. You have Trey Lance two tiers above Brock Purdy. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, I want I, I want to be there with you, brother. <laughs> I want to be there. He's still on my dynasty roster. It's not happening. It is not let happening. Me, let me let me throw out this. This tier, I think one can as that I'm calling them at the crossroads because one, they can be fantasy difference makers. Some of them could literally be up in terms of like who knows where they're going to be next year or a year or two from now. And then I asked the question: the guys that are starters, I don't feel comfortable with any of them being my quarterback one in dynasty. I'd rather see them as a quarterback too in super flex leagues. So for instance, Daniel Jones is somebody that I went back and forth if I wanted him in tier four, tier five. And I don't think I feel comfortable with him as my QB one in a super flex league. So that's how I kind of started this. It, it's understandable. And reaching this out. Like in our consistency charts, Daniel Jones is an F over his last 17 games because it's, it's wild. The highs are highs. The lows are really low. So in this tier, Daniel Jones... Geno Smith, Kirk Cousins, Kenny Pickett, Russell Wilson, Mac Jones, and, and yeah, Trey Lance at the very, very bottom of this. <laughs> yeah, tier five, Trey Lance. What, okay, what is happening, Kyle? <laughs> Talk to I me. Don't know, Talk Bats. to me. Talk <laughs> to me uh, about Trey Lance. Yes, if he's it's a, over, man. If it's he's over. a starting quarterback for his team, where would you put uh, for a team? Where would you put him? If he were the starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, Trey Lance would be tier one, baby. Tier one. Give me one. But it's not. But it's not. Oh, happening, this is too ever. low, is what you're saying. That's that was the disrespectful part. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's too low if he were the starter. But but playing the game of is Trey Lance if Trey Lance were a starter is just like a completely useless waste of of mental power because it's not. We are done. We're dead. We we are, the Trey Lance hive is deceased. The, the the exterminator came and wiped us all out. It's not happening. So moving on, <laughs> this tier is actually pretty easy for me because it it goes like this: of Mac Jones, no; Russell Wilson, no; Kenny Pickett, <laughs> no; no. Um, Kirk Cousins and Geno Smith, fantastic veterans to have who can just they can sneak in to your starting lineup uh, over the next two two years or so. Uh, I think you can it. With Geno's contract, it's pretty safe to say that he will be the starter for this year and next year. And the dude is just, I mean, that, that like, the Seattle Seahawks wide receiver core by the end of season are considered, what, top five minimum with Metcalf Lockett and, and JSN. So, uh, look, Geno Smith was, like, the ultimate waiver wire find of – if you had the faith that he was going to take the job from Drew Locke. And then Kirk Cousins just he fluctuates, man. I mean he'll the he's not going to be a top five quarterback, but he also won't be a he he won't be outside of the top fifteen or so because he's just he's on a team that will have to throw and he has Justin Jefferson and now Jordan Addison. So Kirk Cousins is a, a at crossroads I guess is a good way to put it because he is uh he's a, just a really good stop gap. It's it, this group is not the most inspiring. Like Geno Smith, I think for this year, you can say, oh, I feel comfortable. I would love him as a quarterback too. Daniel Jones, same thing. Kirk Cousins, okay, we get at least one more year. But you start going down the list, and maybe that's what where we're at, people, is once you start going down this list, you're going to go, oh, here's where dynasty quarterbacks are at. Like the next tier we'll talk about in a second is like guys that like have one or two years, and then who knows. And then the tier after that is a definite who knows. 
So, Betts, anything you want to comment on just a volatile group? Yeah, I mean, I agree with the names at the bottom where it's like, ugh, this is not good. Of like, you know, Russ and Mac Jones. <laughs> I feel like I've been more vocal that I'm kind of higher on Daniel Jones just because I think we're getting another couple seasons of are we getting rushing over under 650 rushing yards for Daniel under. Jones? Um, let me check the ultimate draft kit projections real quick. Um, <laughs> I'm saying give me your give me. The I would take bets. the under confidently. I would probably side with the under, but like 500 plus seems very safe with upwards of six to seven hundred yards, and like that's super valuable in fantasy, right? And down the stretch, yes, it is. they showed us that they were more willing to go. They weren't a pass-heavy team relative to the NFL, but relative to their early season, they were more pass-heavy as far as you know, first half of the year and second half of the year. So I think they're telling us we kind of want that to be more of our norm, and I think that could mean good good things for Daniel Jones. So 26 years old, man, like I'm I'm still kind of buying him. If if, if the public views him as like this, well, we don't know where he's going to be in his career. Like they signed an extension. I think for fantasy, he'll be good. I, I get the real-life NFL question marks, but um, I'm, I'm in on Daniel Jones. So if we're bumping Purdy up, he'd be in this next group for me. And I'm calling them short-term solutions because Aaron Rodgers, super old. Derek Carr, getting pretty old. And really, it's kind of more like a two two-year, three-year deal. Jared Goff, who knows, Matthew Stafford. And we can put Brock Purdy in this group too, where I think beyond... 2023 heading into 2024 these guys could either be like sweet they're rock solid for my team because i saw them perform but it's also really tough assessing this like how much more do you truly have so i think aaron Rodgers is a target that we'd say hey we love for this year but any of the rest of these pocket passers are you trying to acquire on the cheap knowing they're older knowing that you know besides brock purdy it's like okay well these guys i don't know how many true elite years they have Derek Carr's never been a QB one anybody on that list Mike that you are actively trying to target in dynasty so Rodgers is it's nice like I think that real life NFL completely mirrors fantasy in this specific instance of if you are a quarterback away and you're wanting to do a cheaper transaction you're not wanting to trade your entire future away for uh one of the higher level quarterbacks Aaron Rodgers will be there for two years and he's going to have Garrett Wilson for two years and like I think that there's a chance that he has some magic left this is not a perfect like a I'm going to pound the table and call that Rodgers is definitely going to have that magic but he certainly could Derek Carr no Matthew Stafford I'm surprised that he came back to play this year. I really thought that he was going to retire. So it's it'll be a 17 games of if Matthew Stafford takes just a couple really big hits, we'll be right back in the same place of I will be shocked if he doesn't retire. And then and Jared Goff is at least interesting because of the whispers of a contract extension. You know, turning 29 this year for Jared Goff and seemingly on a, a team that's going to be have an okay offense, you know, as a quarter, he's not a quarterback one, but as as a QB two for super flex, that's a little bit cheaper. Jared Goff would be my target. Bets any any of this group that you are targeting because it's the bottom could fall out of any of these guys. Oh, for sure, and you know, I think we should clarify these are these guys have almost no value in, in one quarterback league. That's certainly uh, true, but. If you're talking about super, super flex as a QB two, like I think Jared Goff's interesting. Now I've been kind of stuck in the middle on the Lions because their offense is is great. They've got an incredible scheme with Ben Johnson, uh, but the wide receiver depth chart is not good. And so I'm kind of like stuck. Of like, was last year a mirage for Jared Goff, or like, is this really going to stick? You know, year over year. But I think from an NFL standpoint, they've put themselves in a very good position. Like, if it doesn't go well this year. They can get out pretty soon of that situation. But if he plays well, I think he's the starting quarterback. So I'm, I'm fine with Jared Goff, but understand you're not really getting a ceiling there. It's more of a floor play if you need a QB2 starter. And if you want more write-ups, we have Dynasty write-ups on all of these people in the Dynasty Pass. Last two tiers, I'll quickly go through them. I call them the Tier 7. Who knows? I just said, like, I don't know. It's Jordan Love yeah. because I don't know if the Packers even know. I've watched some highlights 
from preseason, which tell or from training camp, does my, doesn't tell me much. My hope, I'll just I'll leave it at hope. My hope for Jordan Love is peaking, of uh, of looking at his situation. I know that the the Packers did the right thing by the team of essentially taking, basically taking away his fifth year option and just changing up the structure of his contract a little bit so they can they can find out pretty quick if this guy is is going to be the dude or not. But he he's just set up for so much offensive success that I'm 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 growing more and more okay with the idea of see if just put some feelers out see if you can get Jordan Love for real cheap. It might he's an interesting name because he's He's correctly buried in, in ranks. He's in our tier seven. Who knows? But trading for him might be a little bit more difficult because Jordan Love has surely been, even in single quarterbacks, he's been on somebody's roster now for, what, three years, headed into year four, something like that. So generally with, with players who have been held that long, the managers who have been just sitting their fingers crossed for Jordan Love, they're probably not going to give him up. It's like Alexander Madison. You're like, if you want to go get him, you pr you have to overpay a little bit because people have sat on it and waited. So that, I think that's the case for Jordan Love. But I don't know. I'm I'm becoming more and more open to the idea that he was he was a first round quarterback. They traded up for him. Like, do they have any idea what they're doing in Green Bay? I don't know. I don't know if they do. But I'm open to it. And and my my dude Romeo Dobbs is talking me into Jordan Love. <laughs> So they they scored 13 fewer touchdowns the year before. So there's room for this offense just based on numbers alone to say, hey, the one thing, and I've I have pooped on Rodgers so much of what last year was, the one thing they were great at is in the slot. You know, they led the entire league in slot receiving touchdowns, which shocked me. Like the, it was the one thing they did well. Lazard. What was that? Like where Watson was? Lazard was there a lot. Aaron Jones. Uh, Watts, like. Just getting mismatches. Yeah, that was yeah. one thing they schemed really well. They led the league in slot yards per route run. So if they can figure out scheme wise, it's weird though that Jordan Love, I, I remember doing his rookie profile out of Utah State. The dude doesn't run. So anybody that thinks they're going to get 20 rushing yards a game, 25, like a Daniel Jones bump, it's not really there. But he's, he's interesting. Who knows? In this tier, I also have Will Levis, Banana Rama, no. Desmond Ritter. <laughs> Straight Sam Howell, <laughs> Hendon Hooker. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, no one does, the, man. <laughs> Sam Howell is, it, this is perfect for him. Was, and this is nothing against Sam Howell, the player. It's the situation of Washington feeling like you can pretty confidently say Sam Howell is going to start games. He will get benched for Jacoby Brissett. And then Sam Howell will eventually come back in for when Jacoby Brissett gets benched and just like destroying these players mentally and burying them because they're trapped in a horrible situation for years and years. That's how I see Sam Howell. I would be more interested in Desmond Ritter of just <laughs> you said it so crossing your fingers. <laughs> it's, no, no, this, I think I dude, heard we're like in a tier throw seven, sound man. As you said that, actually, yeah, we're, <laughs> it's tier seven. I'm trying to get some positivity in here, and uh, Hendon Hooker is he's just so old. <laughs> he will turn 26 this NFL season. Hasn't taken a single snap, but I genuinely believe he is a really good quarterback. So. If if Jared Goff is out, then Hendon Cook, Hooker should get his shot, and I think he'll be all right. But it's it's a it's a long path between Hendon Hooker getting an opportunity and actually succeeding. Let me let me put it this way, and you guys can answer. Of these quarterbacks, because I'll throw out Jordan Love, because I think if he's fine, then he could be the quarterback again next year on a team friendly deal. Between Will Levis, Desmond Ritter, Sam Howell, Hendon Hooker, the Who Knows Boys, who who are you going to just cast your lot? Who could be their starting quarterback in 2024 for their team? Levis. <laughs> yeah, that seems, <laughs> I don't even know if I don't, I don't even want to say likely, but it seems likely that that could be the case. So I think that's probably the best answer. Yeah. It, everything in training camp is not good. Not good for Will Levis. What I'm hearing. And then the last group, I just need to mention them because they have a pulse 
and they are in the league getting paid. Ryan Tannehill, Jimmy Garoppolo, Sam Darnold, Zach Wilson, and Baker Mayfield. I, I almost left Zach Wilson off this list, but he's getting paid. That's yeah. so Yeah, that's fair. Uh I think it's that's a pretty easy nope for everyone. Uh, Ryan Tannehill <laughs> should should like Ryan Tannehill I think can have an adequate year and keep his job. I think it is possible. You know, we're not that far removed from that and the the team really just fell apart and didn't have anybody last year. And now you got DeAndre Hopkins. Like give Ryan Till Tannehill DeAndre Hopkins. I bet good things will happen for Mr. Tannehill and then Traylon Burks can be the number 2. So, of this group, the only one I have any slight interest in it's Ryan Tannehill. And it's going to cost you absolutely nothing if you want to get He might be on your waiver wire. Who knows? For a Superflex team, just as backup, it's going to yeah. cost you nothing to get Ryan Tannehill. All right, one more segment. Take it or leave it. All right, final words here. We're just going to look at this list, all of these tiers, these beautiful, beautiful tiers, and maybe name a player that you feel confident, hey, in Dynasty, just that manager out there. Maybe we didn't even get to talk about this player, but I think they can hold value. And then one player you think can lose value. I'm going to say, and maybe, maybe I know Mike's not going to like this. I think the manager that has Kenny Pickett, I'm not saying he's going to ascend to a great level, but I think he will confidently be this team's starting quarterback next year. And I think he can be a solid QB two for your team. So I just want to give them a little confidence that in year two, you're going to get a slight bump. Uh, and I have some stats out there about year two rookie or year two quarterbacks who are in the first round. They tend to go more towards average in terms of TD rate. So I feel pretty good about him. And then also, I just want to give a, a vote of confidence for CJ Stroud. It might be gross, but heading into 2024, CJ Stroud's going to, he's going to slay in this league. Go ahead, Betts. Yeah, let's uh, let's actually talk about some exciting players <laughs> for this segment. I'm excited about Trevor Lawrence. We talked about that. I think he's a guy who could take a, a big step forward this year, and then uh, you know really be a guy that people are super excited about in Dynasty next year and beyond. Still super young. The one that I'm, I think, hesitant about or just kind of have questions about potentially their value this year or after this year really is the um, the Justin Fields thing that we talked about. It's not that I don't think he's going to be great for fantasy, but if the Bears come out and have a year where they win five games, like is the fan base upset? Do they decide that they need to you know spend a draft pick next year on a, on a guy? I just think the, uh, the, the job security isn't there. So I can see the case where it happens. That said, I think for fantasy, he's still going to be incredible. Yeah, love Justin Fields. And then I'm just going to go with my heart. And it's uh, Deshaun Watson loses value. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's going to do it for us. Like I said, all of our rankings, two QB rankings for Dynasty, they're in the Ultimate Draft Kit, ultimatedraftkit.com. Have fun week, you lovely, lovely people. We'll talk to you next week. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Podcast. If you want to take your dynasty skills to the next level, check out the fantasyfootballers.com.